Greetings, life management students. Let's go ahead and have a study session for exam number three, the final exam of this course, covering chapters 11 through 14. So again, you should have your study guide out and handy so you can go along to make sure that you have the correct information to prepare for the exam. Chapter 11, interpersonal communication, interpersonal communication. It is the active exchange of information between two or more people. The active exchange of information between two or more people. Emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence. The ability to recognize, understand, and manage your own and others' emotions. Emotional intelligence. The ability to recognize, understand, and manage your own emotions as well as others. People who are very knowledgeable about psychology really get to understand more about themselves and more about why people say the things they do. Why do people react the way they do? That's emotional intelligence. How to manage anger. How to man manage anger. So in the exam, it's gonna give you kind of an example, what I call example questions, or it's gonna be a scenario. So in this scenario, you're gonna to wanna to do something, let's say that you and your roommate are having an exchange in which your roommate is overly angry about something. So you're gonna calmly let your roommate know that he's reacting intensely to the situation. And those are more the words you want to use. In other words, you don't wanna tell someone, you know, you're just flying off a handle. You're just losing it. Just calm your anger. When you say things like that, it tends to make people more angry. And so the way you might handle it would be to say something along the lines of, calmly you're calm so you're not agitated you're not aggravated you're not showing that emotion you'll calmly tell your roommate that they're reacting to something very intensely and figuring out what is the real issue here being assertive so we should all be assertive being assertive is really advocating for yourself without offending others without offending or disrespecting other people so advocating for yourself, which we should all be able to do. Articulate how you feel or what your needs are. Advocate for yourself, but do it in a way that's not name calling, belittling, bullying, disrespecting or offending others. The first step towards conflict resolution. And again, this is another one of those questions that in the exam will be an example problem. They will give you a problem However, the answer is pretty much always the same. The first step towards resolving conflict is identifying the problem. Figuring out first, what are we talking about? So identifying the problem. What is one of the ways the people in your social support network can support you? So how do those that you consider to be a part of this network support you? They can join in celebrating your successes. Join in celebrating your successes, accomplishments, the things that you achieve. Anyone who's behind you, says they support you, should be happy for you. Diversity, so diversity. Characteristics or attributes that make us different from one another, and that can be the basis for membership in a group. So diversity characteristics or attributes, meaning that our characteristics can be physical characteristics, it can be the way that we talk, it can be the way that we move, it can be anything that sets us apart in some way. Tolerance. Tolerance is acknowledging, valuing, and respecting what makes people different from you and from one another. So when we're tolerant, we pretty much accept people as they are. That's tolerance. It would be the opposite of discrimination. To discriminate is treating people less favorably based on their membership in a particular group. And again, when we say membership in a particular group, we mean they could belong to a particular ethnic group 
that you discriminate against. They could belong to a particular religious group that you discriminate against. You can discriminate against a certain sex, such as females. Um, so we can discriminate based on membership into a group, and there's many, many different groups. How to make a good impression during a job interview. Again, making a good impression during the job interview, you want to give the interviewer or the person that is interviewing you a good firm handshake, right? A good firm handshake. How can you become a good communicator? Most of us are pretty good at talking. However, to be a good communicator, we need to listen. So we could all probably improve our listening skills. So to be a good communicator, listen. How can you indicate to a speaker that you're paying attention? You want to occasionally add in those uh-huh, right? Yeah, okay. You want to not be staring off somewhere else behind them. You don't want to be zoning out mentally. And when you kind of say, oh, I see, okay, cool. When you say comments like that, it lets the speaker know that you're paying attention. Conflict. Conflict is an inevitable and it is a normal part of life. Conflict is inevitable, a normal part of life. The issue is how you handle conflict. Gender versus sex. Are they different or do they have the same meaning? They do not have the same meaning. The word sex refers to biological differences. In other words, sex refers to what biological reproductive parts you were born with, male or female parts. Gender really refers to how we identify in terms of masculinity or femininity. Right? How do you identify in your gender? Students and campus activities. Well, research indicates that students who participate in campus activities tend to have higher cumulative GPAs. Cumulative means the word total. So their overall GPA or grade point average is higher than those who are not active in campus activities. Okay. Chapter 12. One of the effects of the release of stress hormones is a faster heart rate. When we have a lot of cortisol, cortisol is the hormone that is released when we're stressed out. When our body has too much of it, it reacts in many different ways. And one of the ways it reacts is when we're stressed out, our heart is working harder. Anorexia nervosa refers to strictly restricting your food. In other words, starving yourself. Severely restricting food intake and having an irrational fear of gaining weight. So remember, anorexia is a mental condition in which the individual, what they see in the mirror is different from reality. Their brain is showing them a different image and that image causes them to starve, self-starvation, and to be obsessed with what they think of as the need to be thin. Statements or facts about exercise. Number one, it improves cardio fitness. It improves cardio fitness. Number two, it helps build muscle strength. Helps build muscle strength. Number three, it can be done without joining a gym. Exercise can be done without joining a gym. How many minutes of moderate exercise should you and I get each week? All of us should get 150 minutes. 150 minutes. Anxiety. Anxiety is excessive worry, dread, or fear. Excessive worry, dread, or fear. All of us should experience some type of fear, some worry at points in our life, but anxiety is when it's beyond the norm. It's excessive. Symptoms of a panic attack. One of the symptoms of a panic attack. When you have a panic attack to the individual, it feels like they are having a heart attack. Remember we said that that, that heart rate increases when we're stressed out. And so it feels like they're having a heart attack. Okay. Students get higher grades if they do what? If they regularly go to bed early, 
get up early and eat breakfast. Regularly go to bed early, get up early and eat breakfast. Symptoms of HPV, genital warts. One of the symptoms, the primary symptoms of HPV is genital warts. What is used for applying to finance, for financial aid in college? Something called the FAFSA, F-A-S-F-A, -F -A, FAFSA. What should you do to create your credit card debt under control? You should pay off the entire balance amount every month. So when you get the bill in the more in the month, you get the bill in the mail, and it says that you owe a certain amount because you use your credit card that much, you should pay the whole thing off. Therefore, we shouldn't use credit cards unless we can really pay for them. The only exception is that credit card that you have for emergency uses. So let's say your car breaks down in the middle of nowhere and you're gonna to need to spend $500 or more on car repairs. That's considered kind of an emergency, right? Emergency situations, but pay off the balance every month. Can joyous events cause stress? You bet. Getting married, having babies, buying your first home, all of these things are wonderful occasions, but they do come with stress. Again, stress is a part of life, it is normal. What can affect your mood? What affects our mood? It has to do with what you eat. It has to do with the amount of food and the type of food that you eat. Okay? You can take a nutrition class and learn more about that. Do scholarships have to be repaid? No. Scholarships are free money. You have kind of won an award. When you get a scholarship, you've won an award. You are granted money that does not need to be repaid. What type of balance will you have if your income is greater than expenses? Remember, income is how much money you bring in. Expenses are how much you spend out. All of your bills, your expenses, right? So if we have more income, then we have expenses. At the end of the month, we will have what we call a positive balance. That's what we're hoping for, a positive balance. Chapter 13. People with realistic interest enjoy working with their hands, working outside, using tools, installing and repairing things, or working with animals. So they really enjoy hands-on type of work. What type of careers are people with social interest likely to be interested in and again on the exam this is one of those example type questions and something in a career field that somebody who really is good at social interaction <coughs> excuse me would be occupational therapist so remember an occupational therapist is someone who helps patients who have been through either a car accident a stroke they have lost there's been some brain damage that has caused them to lose the ability to do some of the everyday jobs that you and I take for granted. And the job of an occupational therapist is to teach them that again. Occupational therapist. Values, what are your values? Your values are what you consider important and not just important, really important. Your values are define the core of what you believe in. They really do. Whether you value family, whether you value work, whether you value faith, all of these are different values and, and we many of us feel differently about those values. When we're looking for partners, it's very important to be looking for partners that have similar values. If recognition is one of your work values, what does that mean that you value? You value directing the work of others directing the work of others because then they recognize you as being the team leader as being the manager right directing the work of others vocational identity what is that it is a person's understanding of his or her career goals interest and strengths a person's understanding of his or her career goals interest and strengths college major a college major is a collection of 
courses or classes around an academic theme. And so when you choose to go to college, you can select many different options, whether it's business, whether it is um, nursing, whether it is marketing, whether it is nutrition. These are all majors that have a lot of different classes that talk about the different types of each of those things. Academic advisor, your academic advisor, you should be meeting or meet with your academic advisor at your college at least once each term. And a term is usually a semester. So one semester, fall and spring, that would mean if, we, if you're in school for fall semester and spring semester, you should be meeting your academic advisor once in the fall and once in the spring. So once per term. Internships. Internships are formal programs to provide practical experience for beginners in an occupation or profession. Again, internships, formal programs to provide practical experience for beginners in an occupation or profession. Internships are very valuable. They help you understand whether or not I would really enjoy this job because right? knowing what the job is day to day is important. Academic plan should reflect what? What should your academic plan reflect? It should reflect your goals, what you want to achieve, your goals. When does your career planning end? When does your career planning end? Really never. Um, in other words, once you get a job, your career planning does not end because you may want to move up in that company. You may aspire to being a supervisor, a manager, a regional manager, and continuing on. Really, your career planning may end at retirement or when you've decided that you will no longer be working. Who is responsible for your academic plan? So when you create that academic plan with your academic advisor, ultimately, you are responsible because you are sharing your goals, your ideas, your desires. If those goals change, it's your job to notify your academic advisor. So it is not your academic advisor's job to be responsible for your plan, it is yours. Chapter 14, how do you stay motivated after finishing this college course? How do you stay motivated after finishing this college course? Keeping your greatest successes in mind. If you're walking out of this class with a good grade, that's a huge achievement. If you submitted, you know, the majority of your assignments, if you submitted extra credit, these are all things to pat yourself on the back for because that means you were organized, disciplined, motivated, got the work in, even if you didn't want to, you did it. And that is really positive. That will help propel you to greater successes. Self-awareness. Self-awareness is a cornerstone of critical thinking and personal responsibility. A cornerstone of critical thinking and personal responsibility. In other words, self-awareness is understanding yourself. Understanding yourself. Motivation. It keeps you moving forward. Motivation keeps you moving forward. What do you do to maintain a positive attitude, which is so important in life? What do you do to maintain a positive attitude? Number one, develop resiliency. And resiliency means overcoming trauma, overcoming challenges and obstacles. That's resiliency. So when something happens and a door closes on you, you're resilient when you continue on towards another door. Number two, take personal responsibility for your learning. This is important, I tell students. Take personal responsibility for your learning. In other words, you may move on to a future college course and you may get a professor that is completely unlike Professor Westland, myself. And you may struggle and you may feel like, I hate this course. If the professor were just better at doing their job, I would be able to learn. You can't really think that way. You have to take personal responsibility and say, okay, so maybe I'm not really understanding their teaching methods. I have to figure out a way that the information makes sense to me. 
I need to get involved in study groups with other students. I need to make an appointment with the professor and just let them know I'm trying and how do I best approach learning in this class, right? So take personal responsibility. Don't blame it on your instructor or the college or the class or things of that nature. And number three, maintain hope. Always maintain hope. When we fall into despair is when we no longer have any hope, then it's hard to move forward. So maintain hope. Defining your goals and tracking your progress. Defining your goals and tracking your progress. Ultimately, you are responsible to do this. It is your responsibility to define your goals, which hopefully you started doing in this class with our goals paper. Define your goals and then track your progress. Don't never look at your paper again, but go back to it and say, how am I doing on these goals? Where am I at? Have I changed some of the goals, which is fine. What should you do when you experience a setback? And setbacks happen to all of us. What should you do when you experience a setback? Analyze what caused you to fall short. In other words, learn from it. Analyze what caused you to fall short. So what was the setback? What role did you play in that setback? Sometimes we have setbacks and they're beyond our control, but we can still learn from them. We can still learn, right? Optimism. Optimism is having hope and confidence about your future. Optimism, having hope and confidence about your future. What does it mean to network? What does it mean to network? To network is to meet and get to know people in order to obtain insights into topics such as schools you might want to transfer to or job opportunities. So network, meet and get to know people in order to obtain insights into topics such as schools that might be interesting to you or to transfer to and job opportunities. Networking is very important. That's why even businesses will have what they call this, the Better Business Bureau or the Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Commerce is like a network group where once a month, businesses will get together at a restaurant or someplace and they'll exchange business cards and they'll get to know each other so they can use each other's businesses and they can get to know insights into the industry. Self-knowledge, self-knowledge. Gaining self-knowledge is an ongoing process. Gaining self-knowledge is an ongoing process. In other words, Myself, I continue to learn more and more about myself all the time. So we're really not at a place yet as we age where we say, I'm done. I know everything there is to know about me because we change. That's human development. Human development is how we change over time. And so we gain that self-knowledge continuously. It's an ongoing process. How can you succeed? How can you succeed? This is important. You can succeed with the help of others. You succeed with the help and support of others. You do not do it alone. So the idea that I can do everything on my own is false, it's incorrect. We succeed with the help of others. And always keep that in mind. I hope that you've learned in life management to be open, to seek out that social capital, those network opportunities to help you be successful. That's it for exam number three.